So obviously we're going to talk about the $40 billion um, worth of money that every single Democrat voted for, every single one of them. The squat, Bernie Sanders. Well, Bernie Sanders is actually hasn't voted yet because it's going to go to the Senate. And the only senator that actually was able to halt this and say, wait a minute, we need we need we need to have a conversation. What the hell is this? Was Republican Senator Rand Paul. And I am not a huge fan of Rand Paul, but I will give credit where it's due. And I, in fact, I've been giving credit. I gave credit to Marjorie Taylor Greene and Pasta mentioned Matt Gates, And I retweeted that because I think it's important that we do give credit. Now, do I believe that they're playing team sports? Yes, to a degree I do. But the, the fact of the matter is none of this has remotely been said by anybody that's supposed to be a progressive. And that's important to point out. We're going to have that discussion because Pasta and I kind of have a little bit of a disagreement because I don't buy a lot of this from most of them. I do think like Rand Paul has c consistently been more anti-war, but um, Matt Gates did go into it deeper like Pasta and I were discussing earlier. So we're going to discuss that. So let's get right into it because I think this is a worthy discussion of, of everything that's happening. And uh, I'll release a short video clip, kind of the, like the ones that I do alone that kind of summarizes a little bit of of what's going on with this bill and why people are so mad and why it's such a big deal. So political wrote that the House passed the $40 billion military aid to Ukraine, and it's going to uh, obviously uh, hurt us in terms of the the amount of, of bullshit that the American people are dealing with. We're dealing with a 40 year record high inflation. We're dealing with an increase in food prices at the grocery store and uh, incoming recession. Everything has been crashing, including cryptocurrencies. And so this was, of course, uh, Biden and the Democrats' little charade, Chuck Schumer. And this was to help the allied country. And by the way, they warned Biden that the, um, the, the U.S. cash to help Ukraine would run out in just over a week. And they voted for this. 368 to 57 votes. And uh, Chuck Schumer promised that the Senate would move swiftly to pass the, pack, the package. But the problem is, as we know now, Rand Paul halted it now. So um, initially, Biden requested 33 billion, right? And this was supposed to be for military aid in Ukraine and for our NATO allies. And then they actually gave him more than what he wanted. And it's about 5% of the total of the national security budget that is 782 billion. So it's the, the 40 billion is about 5%. It's actually more than 5%. So um, it's insane that this is happening right now. As I said, when you, when you put it next to the fact that our economy is not doing hot at all. And Lindsey Graham, which is one of the uh, Republican senators that is, I would consider a neocon, and he's really great friends with Joe Biden, who's also really great friends with Bernie Sanders, said defeating Putin is priceless. And um, he's, he said, uh, do I think this will be the last round? No, I think we'll be doing this again. Who knows where we're going to be two months from now, three months from now. As long as they're willing to fight, we need to help. Do you guys see this this like insanity, the audacity? They're willing to fight to the last Ukrainian. And guess what? That they don't care about Ukrainians. They don't give a fuck about Ukrainians. They don't give a fuck about you and they don't give a fuck about Europe and the European yeah. Union and and all of these NATO nations that are going to suffer as a result of this and they already are economically. They aren't going to have gas to warm themselves this winter. People are already building fires inside of their homes which could potentially cause their entire homes to burn and because they can't afford to pay the the energy bill. And that's just the beginning of this because we haven't even gotten to actual winter. We're actually in summer right now. And so like I said, Rand Paul quickly blocked the passage of the $40 billion Ukraine package. And um, the, he, a lot of people came after him because they were like, well, this was supposed to pass swiftly. It was supposed to be very quick. And of course, um, he's a Republican. And now this is delaying the, the, the vote for the Senate till next week. And um, 
Yeah, so uh, yeah, I think it's Im- I think it's important that we we talk about the the you know the fact that it's Republicans actually voting more in an anti-war sense than Democrats. But um, I want to uh, go over a couple of things. This article also talks about how uh, Paul, who's a libertarian, you know they they know him as a libertarian, uh, he has contis continuously oppose U.S. intervention abroad. He said he wants particularly a language inserted into a bill without a vote that would have an inspector general scrutinize the new spending. And of course, he has a long history of demanding changes by holding up or threatening to delay bills on the brink of passage. He did this during the uh, defense budget and the 9-11 first uh, attack, first responders. And um, he said that the added spending was a significant sum that would deepen federal deficits and worsen inflation. And he's right because we're at a record inflation. Inflation, I believe, is at, uh, God, I think it's at 14.3 inflation. It's it's really bad. Or sorry, 8, 8.3 inflation. <laughs> 8.3 inflation. So um, he says last year's bu- budget deficit was almost $2.8 trillion but likely headed downward and the bill spending is less than two tenths of 1% the size of the US economy, suggesting its impact on inflation would be negligible. This is um, the, the argument, no matter how sympathetic the cause, my oath of office is to the national security of the United States of America. We cannot save Ukraine by dooming the US economy. So that's his stance and a lot of people agree with it. And just to remind everybody, by the way, all Democrats and most Republicans backed it and they agreed on it because, like I said, Democrats and Republicans tend to agree on war when it comes to that. Every no vote, though, did come from the GOP. So there's that. And um, what's included in this measure is six billion dollars for Ukraine intelligence, equipment and training for its forces, plus four billion dollars in financing to help Kiev and NATO allies build up their militaries and 8.7 billion for the Pentagon to rebuild stocks of weapons that it shipped to Ukraine and 3.9 billion for US troops in the region. And by the way, uh, it also includes 8.8 billion to keep the Kiev government functioning, more than 5 billion to provide food to countries around the world that rely on Ukrainian crops devastated by the fighting and 900 million to teach English and provide other services to Ukrainian refugees who have moved to the United States. Can you imagine if they did that for like literally all the other uh, immigrants and all the other people that the the refugees that we bombed every single, like all all the Afghanis, all the Syrians, all the Iraqis, all the Iranians, the Lebanese, the the Libyans. I mean, I'm just trying to figure it out why Ukraine is so important, right? Why is it Ukraine that's so important and how much money they're giving? And by the way, it's not included here, but there is an, uh, a supplemental, a Ukraine supplemental bill that has an undisclosed amount for the CIA in, uh, uh, to work like on behalf of Ukraine. So as you can see, this is uh, the intelligence apparatus at work. They want to defeat Russia at all costs, and they're willing to kill everybody and go to the last Ukrainian to do it. Fam. Yes. Anything to say on that? Well, um, you you know, I just can get into it. I was going to digress. I'm making notes all over the place over here because there's so much to say. And by the way, I let our guests know that we need an extra 15 minutes. So we got a little bit more time to get into this because this is really important. Uh, I do want to say this much. I mean, everything we're talking about is so crazy right now because it's uh, uh, the American citizens really, really need to wake up. You know, I mean, this is just this is just mind blowing that they're doing this. And it's mind blowing that we have a lot of people that don't even want to have discussion. What Rand Paul did was make sure that we can have, once again, discussion on the floor. Uh, And he does, you know, uh, he he points out to the fiscal issue that he wants to have like a surgeon general or so whoever, not a surgeon general, who did he want to make sure that he looked at how the money's being spent? He didn't want to just give a blank check. Right. You want somebody to look over it. Exactly. To oversee the money, report back, provide transparency that's what more discussion on the floor does it provides transparency we understand which one of our representative lawmakers how they feel on this and what they have to say about this they can't hide they're trying to do what they did for the cares act when nancy pelosi just tried to 
push it through without a vote, just a, a, a call vote. They're trying to do the same thing here. And it takes another libertarian dude to get on the floor, to raise his hand, to stomp his feet. Where's our friends and allies at inside the Senate? You know, where, where are they at? Why isn't Bernie? Why isn't Elizabeth Warren standing up for this? I mean, isn't there a line fam, a shit line that you say enough is enough? These guys have been not only have they voted positive for these things, for these things, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, when it came to the CARES Act and they just gave money away, they're being silent while more money is given away. And inside their districts, inside their homes, inside their states, there's mass homelessness all over the place. We don't have health care. We don't have housing. The gas is ridiculous. They have- We're looking like a third world country. Like we have crumbling, literally crumbling infrastructure. You can see buildings falling apart. Every areas that were once nice are completely just complete looking like shit in San Francisco. People are just robbing the the like the, the pharmacies all the time. Like it, it's out of control. And I'm not somebody that's like, oh, like, let's go punish all these criminals. That's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it because when people do that, when people go and rob pharmacies and stores, they're doing it because we're in a state of poverty. We're in a state where the vast majority of Americans can no longer afford to live. And by the way, they're still recovering from the freaking pandemic bullshit that happened. And now all of the states have effectively stopped any help. And I know for a fact that people are going to suffer even more because of that. By the way, Florida just stopped the um, the money to help people pay their rent. Florida actually took longer than California to stop it. And they just stopped it. And I know this for a fact because I know somebody who worked there. And 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 that is going to send chaos, even in a state like Florida that was still doing better economically than say California or New York, it's going to result in chaos. And now you have the whole crypto thing where a lot of crypto just sunk. And, and a lot of people, you know, are, because that's how it works. You know, rich people or people who have some sort of money are able to buy more when it, things are cheaper, when stocks are cheaper, when coins are cheaper. But the people who need that money to literally eat, pay their rent, they're screwed. They're screwed. And so now it's just really bad, guys. I can't stress enough. Most economists are saying things are we're going to hit a, a recession by the end of the year. And yeah. the end of the year is like it's like halfway. We're halfway there. Yeah. And by the way, fam, the only thing I didn't I want to say is that people like Lindsey Graham, who you mentioned, yeah, he doesn't really think that Ukraine could win and stuff. I mean, he might have at one point thought they could do that when he went there with his buddy John McCain in 2014. But that's why he has the language. And he said the other day on TV, we need to pour it on, fam, when it comes to Ukraine. He is politically committed. He can't pull out. He would look like an asshole. You know what I'm saying? And he is just stuck like Chuck. And unfortunately, his freaking lies and his convictions or his bullshit that he has to hide, uh, hide is uh, killing Ukrainians more than yeah. anything. Killing Ukrainians. Yeah, it's killing Ukrainians. It's screwing up Europeans. It's mm -hmm. like Europe, as Gonzalo said when he was here on the show on Monday, are going to be far more devastated yeah. Than, yeah. than anybody else because they're so dependent on that gas. They're so dependent on it. And, and of course, that's not taking into account all the wheat production, all the grain production and everything else. And they're doing it to themselves and they're doing it to themselves. And by the way, they're going to continue blaming Russia for it, saying, how dare Russia do this? What is Russia doing? You're sanctioning them. I don't understand. They, they're simply saying, uh, hello, we just want rubles like just. You know, you guys are paid in rubles now. They've changed the whole game, fam. And when you get to these Democrats like the Nancy Pelosi's, uh, the Pamela's, uh, the all these other Ilhan Omans, they're using this whole. And this is why you when you said you sniffed that it, it's something out there smells rotten in Denmark. When all of a sudden this opinion piece comes out, they're trying to use the whole opinion piece as a distraction for what they're doing. And all yeah. the progressives are going along with it. They're cohorts. That's yeah. it. That's Nina it. Turner, right? Oh, Nina Turner. Nina we Turner. didn't put it in here, but yeah. Nina Turner said, "Oh, the Democ or the Republicans are focused on uh, our while mothers don't have access to baby formula. The Republicans are focused on taking away abortion rights." And somebody replied, "Like, how much? How much baby formula can forty billion dollars buy?" Yeah, yeah. Really? How much baby? How much baby formula, Nina? 
Like, stop, stop the bullshit. Like, it's not going to be, we're not going to allow this anymore. We're not going to allow them to control this narrative every single time. You have to learn to spot it, to stop it and, and call them out on their bullshit. Because this, this is absolutely like, when are Americans going to say, okay, that's it. We're done here because you should be out in the streets right now. Yeah. Literally. I mean, this is they're giving billions to Ukraine and telling you no on student debt, no on helping out people with health care, no on doing anything for the American people. And this is why you have a lot of these, you know, Amer America first Republicans saying something, because I, I mean, Ukraine's yeah. going to get what everything you before you. And that shouldn't be. That's not why I say it only yeah. right like i'm an anti-imperialist because i don't think I, I believe all countries should have their own uh sovereign rights to decide what what to do and we shouldn't be involved in more war wars and all of that because I, it's just you know that's just what i believe but i don't care at the end of the day if they believe that we shouldn't be interfering in wars anymore i agree with that yeah and by the way, I got a text message from Nancy Pelosi that I was looking at really quickly. It's Nancy Pelosi, fam. I am so disgusted I can hardly text this message. Type this text message. Like you were typing it in the first place, please. I just watched every single Republican Senate vote to block Democrats' historic vote to codify Roe v. Wade into law. I can't change what they've done, but I can make them regret it. I'm calling for a massive response. 10,000 gifts before midnight to kick every last Republican senator out of office for what they've just done. <clears throat> Will you step up and give us $15 this moment to help the It's like they're using it as a campaign. They don't like have $15, Nancy. <laughs> they don't have fucking $15. Forty billion billion to Ukraine. You won't even give people $15 an hour minimum wage. I mean, yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's like an hour's worth of work yeah. that they don't even get anymore. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, this is this is absolute like the These audacity people are evil. They're evil. They're, they don't deserve they yeah. don't deserve sympathy. They deserve to be literally like Game of Thrones, like yeah. shamed, like Cersei thrown out in the streets, put into the Hague. That's what they deserve. That's yeah. that's literally what they deserve. French Revolution. I mean, so yeah. let's hear Nancy Pelosi's uh, <laughs> reasoning. Nance. For you, the American people who are really not in a good position economically, most people right now, giving to Ukraine, please. The impact that, his, that it is having on food for the world. So when you're home thinking, what is this all about? Just think about when I was hungry, you fed me in the Gospel of Matthew. It also is so pleased that Mr. Meeks, the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, was with us because we talked about sanctions. <laughs> Damn. I mean, what do you... I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just don't even know what to say anymore. Yeah? Like, remember what you said? We feed them. We feed them. No, people here aren't getting fed either. And if you would just stop the war and stop giving money and focusing on conquering Eurasia and defeating Russia, and now now they're looking at Taiwan, by the way. Keep your eye out on Taiwan because that's coming. That's next. That's happening. Oh, my God. No, like, no. Like, this is um, people here do not deserve this anymore. I mean, this is an absolute travesty what's happening it's an absolute travesty yep let's get to the next video let's roll to the next one so i we played this the other day with our guest vanessa Beely, right and we were all laughing because we're like this is a this is like a far right republican in fact but she's also ridiculed right she's also ridiculed in the media she's like the arch nemesis of aoc all the progressives hate her but look what she says, because I have to play this again, because she literally says that this is this is absolutely wrong. And she's 100 percent right. 100 percent right. Thank you. I rise in opposition to the Ukrainian supplemental bill. Forty billion dollars. But there's no baby formula for American mothers and babies. An unknown amount of money to the CIA in the Ukraine supplemental bill 
but there's no formula for American babies and mothers. $54 million in COVID spending in Ukraine, but there's no formula for American babies and mothers. $900 million for nonprofits and organizations in Ukraine, but there's no formula for American babies and mothers. $8.7 billion for economic support and funding in Ukraine, but there's no formula for American mothers and babies. If this is about claiming that it's about saving lives, let's be real, then we would care about war-torn countries like Ethiopia. So that's a bunch of hypocrisy because I never hear Ethiopia brought up here. Totally ignoring, completely ignoring our own border crisis, our own baby formula crisis, and brutal inflation skyrocketing gas prices that no one can afford, but $40 billion for Ukraine? Stop funding regime change and money laundering scams and U.S. politician cover-ups of their crimes in countries like Ukraine. The American people do not support paying for constant U.S. involvement in foreign affairs while our own government fails our own country. Let me remind everyone here, we swore an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America and our borders. We should be paying attention to our country right now. I yield back. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, fam, I, I, obviously there was some things in there hidden, like little, you know, things that were like little jabs that probably things we wouldn't agree with the border uh, crisis, like because it's right. not tied to regime change. But she mentions regime change. She actually talks about it. We on the show in this network, we've talked about AFRICOM, how it gets no talking whatsoever in the mainstream, not even in independent media. I mean, we get criticized for not talking about it a lot, but have we talked about Ethiopia? Have we talked about AFRICOM? She mentioned it, and she also mentioned regime change. Of course, the inflation and whatnot, and, you know, I mean, that's important to mention. And, of course, as a, you know, a Marjorie Taylor Greene conservative, she's going to mention the Constitution again, like the Constitution's like right. some holy thing. But, I mean, there's just so much there that's loaded that needs to be said, that could be said. And, yes, I'm not going to agree with Marjorie Taylor Greene when it comes to China. I'm not going to agree with her when her opinions about, you know, when she takes the gun and, blows up the socialism and all the bullshit. But, you know, when things are said like this, that this changes discourse around the dinner table. And that is really important. And these loaded statements are going to get people to start digging. It shouldn't be that hard to be more anti-war than Marjorie Taylor Greene. It really, it really shouldn't. If you're a progressive and you ran on all this progressive brand stuff, you should easily be able to be more anti-war than Marjorie Taylor Greene. But they're not. But they're not because the, the Democratic Party is now the party of the war. And I'm not saying Republicans are anti-war by any means because they're not. By the way, she takes money from the defense industry. Yeah. She does. So I'm not I'm not by any means thinking that she's some sort of anti-war, anti-imperialist, you know, ooh, like she's going to come and save us all. And I don't think anybody should think that of any of these politicians because all of them have proven that they will sell to the highest bidder and that they will be politicians at the end of the day. Stop putting your faith in politicians. These politicians need to fear you. And I say that because, Pasta, I want you to answer this comment because somebody commented, um, should I just had it? It might have gone up. So Monarch said, don't give Marjorie Taylor Greene full credit because she's basically saying this to save her ass. What happens when Republicans are back in control in Congress? Will Marjorie Taylor Greene say the same thing then? What's your answer to that? Well, number one, we don't have a crystal ball, so we don't know what she's going to say, but I kind of agree with you, the sentiment, and we've talked about this before. Uh, there was a comment out there where somebody was saying conservatives are just more interested in, in going after the right you know, enemy, their enemy, and stuff like that. Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'm pretty sure she probably sucks when it comes to Israel, too, as well. But And the thing is, is I'm not giving anybody full credit. I wouldn't give anybody full credit at all. I'm always going to be cautious of what they do. I'm always going to be very conscious of how they vote. But that's not the point in this situation, because if we lead with that and we say, hey, man, uh, uh, you know, we shouldn't trust any politician because we can say this about every single politician or every lawmaker out there, whatnot, we'll, we'll always find reasons to nitpick. All I'm saying is that what she has said 
it should be led with it. Like we said, we're going to knock people down when they do something wrong, and we're going to give credit where credit is due. And I'm just giving her credit for this right here, this speech, what she's saying, what she's pointing out. And here's something to also consider, Monarch. Marjorie Taylor Greene, Matt Gates, Rand Paul, they have a lot more influence than we do over here, than you do whatsoever. They get a lot more ears and a lot more voices. And when you're desperate to hear somebody say certain things, because the whole problem with the Russiagate problem for me right out the gate was this, is that we are saber rattling with a the other nuclear power. To me, that's insane. It, it's like Ambassador Cohen used to say, the number one foreign policy job of any president is to keep us out of war with Russia. Nobody's saying what these people have just said just recently right here. I don't even think Tulsi has had a speech in a comment the way uh, that, that Mr. Matt Gates did on the first day. So it's just, it, it, it's something that we, when they, when they say these things and they, and they speak them right, I know their voting record has to also be looked upon. But the thing that I also pay attention to is the rhetoric. Because then they'll start repeating this dialogue. And, and they left little nuggets to go ra down rabbit holes from some of the conservatives, man, that never never go down there, that we always talk to and say, hey, man, don't you know about the history? I mean, when we get to it, Matt Gates mentions the Mujahideen. He's setting a precedence and telling people, dude, this is something that we always do, regime change. And, and to see, I would never think that Marjorie Taylor Greene would use the term regime change. So, yes, keep your eye on them. Be cautious of them. When they speak stupid shit, you call them out. But we're never going to agree with everybody on everything. And I, and I know who they work for, guys. I know who they work for. I just like the fact that it's going to change the rhetoric from the voters at the dinner table. I don't know. I don't know if I agree that it's that's the rhetoric. I mean, the rhetoric might for some people because the rhetoric works with the progressives. But if I'm not going to give the progressives much credit for their rhetoric because it's theatrics, I'm not going to do the same with anybody, you know, I'm going to do the same with all of it across the board. But the thing is, these people are talking about foreign policy. The left, the Democrats, they don't talk about foreign policy unless it's to like send democracy or humanitarian aid, right? I'm not saying neocons like Nince, Lindsey Graham and um, what's his face, like a, a lot of these neocons that are also in the Republican Party, most of them voted for this bill. It's only a handful of them that are saying no. So I think there's a difference between, say, Rand Paul and Lindsey Graham. Huge I difference. think I think there's a difference because he tends to be more of a libertarian minded guy. And sometimes he will do some things. And by the way, I'm like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Rand Paul, uh, but who cares? I mean, at the end of the day, these people are speaking about foreign policy. Progressives do not ever talk about foreign policy. They talk about bullshit. They're focused on Roe v. Wade right now as a like wedge clutch issue so that so that they can get more funding and votes for the Democratic Party. That's that's what's happening. We should uh, play probably um, Rand Paul and what he said. If this gift to Ukraine passes, our total aid to Ukraine will almost equal the entire military budget of okay. Russia. And it's not as if we have that money lying around. We will have to borrow that money from China to send it to Ukraine. The cost of this package we are voting on today is more than the U.S. spent during the first year of the U.S. conflict in Afghanistan. Congress authorized force, and the president sent troops into the conflict. The same cannot be said of Ukraine. This proposal towers over domestic priorities as well. My oath of office is to the U.S. Constitution, not to any foreign nation. And no matter how sympathetic the cause, my oath of office is to the national security of the United States of America. We cannot save Ukraine by dooming the U.S. economy. In March, inflation hit a 40-year high. Gasoline alone is up 48 percent, and energy prices are up 32 percent. Yeah. I mean, those are the statistics you can't deny, right? Uh, gas prices are ridiculous, are ridiculous. And in places where people don't, people make like half of, of like, Let's say gas is like four fifty seven in a state. Some people make like nine dollars an hour. What do you do when that happens? Like, what what do you do? What do you do? Like, what you like? Where where in a society where this is absolutely not sustainable anymore? It's not even a matter of oh, you want you want free stuff. No, it's not sustainable, guys. Even if you love capitalism, it's not sustainable. 
It's not sustainable. And he, and on top of it being not sustainable, these people want to give more money to Ukraine, which ends up in the form of weapons, which ends up in the hands of the Azov Battalion and neo-Nazis, which eventually they lose to the Russians and they continue to lose and lose and lose. And they screw the, the economies of the world on our behalf. And that's what's happening. Yeah. If we, it, some shows, there's the, the, the No Agenda podcast fam that has a bell. And when like a keyword goes off that they're calling bullshit on or something positive, they'll hit the bell. Let's, I'm going to count how many times we should hit the bell in this next speech over here. And we're not going to even play the whole thing, but let's roll this too as well. I'm glad there are some people that are speaking about this on the floor uh, of Congress. It's just like, holy cow, man. Like, this is why they threw all those distractions at us, fam. All those distractions. What we're going to talk about with Dr. Wolf, what they're going to give this money to the Ukraine about. That's why this opinion piece released at this time, because they are just trying to shuffle this shit through as quickly as can. And guess what, fam? They don't want what Rand Paul wants. They don't want to have any accountability on the money. They want to be able to launder that money, take that money. They've been doing it in Ukraine for quite some time, fam, with the carpet bag. And this network has been reporting it for quite some time. And that's what they want. They want to steal it. They want they're cake, they're greedy, and they want to eat it too. Yep, let's hear it. Madam Speaker, I rise to warn of a dangerous bipartisan consensus that is walking us into war with Russia. In the days following Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, Senator Rob Portman said, I haven't seen this kind of unity since 9-11. It's a nice statement, but what does it really mean? Unity always seems to come before the worst decisions we make. Our drive to unity often overruns our reason and discernment. The post 9-11 consensus gave us the Iraq War, the Patriot Act. The COVID lockdowns and mandates came from unity bundled by fear. Defund the police took off because dissent wasn't allowed. You were shouted down as a racist. Just as now, questioning our actions in Ukraine makes you a traitor. Do we have amnesia in this house? Is memory loss a consequence of the gerontocracy of Congress? Just a year ago, we lost a war against goat herders waving rifles. Now we're rushing to fight a nation that possesses 6,000 nuclear warheads? Representatives now recklessly assert that we are at war. Congressman Moulton said last week, quote, we're not just at war to support the Ukrainians, we're fundamentally at war, although somewhat through a proxy, with Russia. The clandestine services are supposed to be the quiet professionals. Seems now they can't stop bragging to news outlets about how America helped Ukraine assassinate Russian generals and sink Russia's flagship. How exactly is this supposed to end? It's as if the administration is probing Putin's nuclear red line. A game of chicken between nuclear powers is insane. And this from Joe Biden, who campaigned to be America's calming sedative. From Russia, I worry about nuclear weapons, not broken tanks. Last night, this house approved $40 billion for Ukraine as American families go without baby formula. To put that in context, Biden's budget calls for $15.3 billion for Customs and Border Patrol. So apparently Ukraine is more than twice as important as our homeland. Two weeks ago, we voted on the Ukraine Lend-Lease Act. I was one of just 10 representatives to vote no. And here was the response from MSNBC. GOP's Putin wing balks at supplying weapons to Ukraine. So you're a supporter of Putin if you think it's a bad idea to give the White House blanket permission to send, quote, any weapon, weapon system, munition, aircraft, vessel, boat, or other implement of war to Ukraine while surrendering our rights to repayment. Okay. We are. I mean, guys, <laughs> I mean, the bipartisanship, fam. How many times have we talked about it on the show? Oh, they're bipartisan in Congress when it comes to war. He says that now his own party, his leaders going out there saying, oh, this is the most important thing out there. You know, uh, we got to give them the weapons. I, I, he's going against it. He talks about the Patriot Act, how they always take our civil liberties and they never give them back. 
6,000 warheads. How many times have we said the doomsday clock, ladies and gentlemen? That's what he's alluding to. This is insane. And, and it's to keep us distracted from everything that's going on, to keep us distracted with this. That's why they put out the whole uh, Roe v. Way stuff. They don't want us looking at the Pfizer data drops. Nobody's talking about it, you know. Even the conservative outlets aren't even talking about 2,000 mules, which I have a lot of things to talk about when it comes to it. I don't think it's the cherry on top that everybody thinks it is, fam. But it's distraction after distraction after distraction. They're trying to send this money through, and I'm just very glad that Marjorie Taylor Greene, Rand Paul, and Matt Gates stepped up. You, you know, people are saying, why are you giving them credit? Why aren't you mad? that progressives, the people that voted, they're supposed to be anti-war, the people that said they're gonna give you uh, health care, they're gonna give you $15 minimum wage. Why aren't you more pissed off at the fact that they're not doing shit for you? Why, why are you mad at the people saying, hey, at least these people are talking about the very big elephant in the room, which is why the hell are we sending so much money to Ukraine when people here don't have anything to literally fall back on. And that's the problem. I really, you know what? I could care less about his comments about the border or their comments about, you know, the defund the police movement because we're not gonna agree on that. We're not gonna agree on that. And frankly, I don't understand how you can be, how, how you don't make the connection between the police and the police state, but yeah. okay, okay, Matt, we'll, we'll talk about that another day. But if you want to stop the government from continuously sending money to Ukraine, I'm down for that. I'm down for that, and I should be able to say that. And guess what? If I were in Congress, I would be voting right along with the Republicans against this bill. And yeah. and what, what what you know what I mean? But that's why people like us are not in Congress because we don't play team sports. And that's the problem. That's the problem that all of these people, including them, because when what? Let's see how they act when it comes to China and Taiwan. Let's see. How, Let's yeah, see yeah. when that happens, right? We, we, but, we know how they're going to be. We know. But how they're but, gonna be. but that's the thing. That's why we don't because we need we can't rely on these people. That's the thing. We can't rely on these people. But we need to at least say at least they're talking about it because yeah. I swear to God, prove me wrong. When have the when have the progressives, the hundred and one progressive caucus members ever said, hey, we shouldn't be sending more money to uh to Ukraine? When has any of them said that? They only talk about it when they can have some sort of identity politics bullshit that they can try to get sympathy and votes and fundraise for. Right now they're talking about Roe v. Wade and that's all they're talking about. So you know what? We're gonna give credit where it's due. I by no means think that these people are some sort of heroes, but it's three people who are saying we shouldn't be funding uh, Ukraine. We have no friends in DC, none, zero, zero. How long is it going to take for Americans to finally say, stop enough. I don't care if you're a Democrat, a Republican, a socialist, uh, whatever. Like, we need to stop this because this is something that is affecting all of us. And it's literally killing our economy. It's killing the economies of the European Union. And it's actually killing people in Ukraine. Yeah.